Hi everybody, I'm here today to talk to you about presentation skills and why they're so important for your future careers. My name is Matthew Dracop and I work here at Glendua University in the Centre for Entrepreneurial Learning. I specialise in teaching people a range of enterprise skills and a crucial one of those is how to present yourself and your ideas. Today I want to talk about three things in particular. I want to discuss what makes a great presentation. I want to share some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. And I want to get you guys presenting. Because at the end of this video, I'm hoping that you guys are going to post some stuff back to me and we can generate some interaction here based on the things that I've put in this presentation today. So let's start with a bit of a question. Why is it important that we give great presentations? Well, think about your futures, think about your careers. Whether you're a student in higher education who's looking at going into a job, whether you're in a job already and looking at developing yourself, or even whether you're in school and you're thinking about the next lecture or the next lesson and how you're really going to stand out with your teachers. Great presentation skills are crucial. I think there's three elements to every good presentation. Number one, content. Number two, design. Number three, delivery. And that's really what I'm going to focus today's discussion on. So content. What, what are we really talking about? We talk about content in a presentation. Well, again, I, I like threes. I like repetitions of three. It might be that I'm slightly odd, I am slightly odd, but I do enjoy things that repeat in three, so that's going to be a running theme in this presentation. We need to develop some aims. If we're going to create good content, we need to understand what the aim of that content is. What's the aim of the presentation in general that we're trying to give? Are you trying to, to get the next job? Are you trying to sell your product, your service, your idea? What's the aim of your presentation? What's relevant in terms of the data that you're going to use? And that means the audience you're aiming at, that means the level of, of language you're using, how much jargon there is. And we need to use both of those things to create an outline for the presentation. Even what I'm giving today started off as an outline, a number of bullet points and concepts and ideas that I brought together. Although I'd like to point out at this time that there are no bullet points until the very end of this presentation and there's a good reason for that. So let's start with developing some aims. An aim really defines what your presentation is trying to do. Think about a three minute presentation. How many aims would you use? Maybe one, maybe two, maybe three. It depends on what you're trying to say. If you're trying to write a presentation about uh, a complex scientific concept, you might only have one aim, and it might be to explain that concept. If you're trying to sell a product, you may have a couple of aims. One of those might be to generate interest in your audience. The other might be to close the sale. It's all about the fit for your presentation and what you're trying to do. Structuring your aims is very important. Every teacher has it drilled into them in their PGCEs, how to structure good aims. They need to be things that you can actually achieve. There's one word that you should always avoid, like the black plague, and that's understanding. You can't generate understanding in your audience. Well, let's be precise, you can, but you can't measure what that understanding is. What we need to do is, is create aims that are achievable. We need to explain. We need to allow investigation. We need to inspire. Get in your dictionary. Find those words that are achievable. And put those into your aims. Create things that you can actually evidence happening. I want you now to, to think about creating a couple of aims. No matter what your presentation's about, whether it's a three-minute academic thesis or whether it's a longer sales pitch to promote a product, 
create some relevant aims. Let's give a quick example here. Let's say I'm selling a new magazine. I've got five minutes to present to an audience. This is something that happens on, the, on that wonderful show that that unnamed channel produces all the time. I can't say it, it might infringe copyright, I'm sorry viewers. What might our aims be for that? Our first aim could be to create an interest in our audience in our product. Our second aim might be to explain our product and its context. And our third aim might be to sell advertising in that magazine to our audience, to, to close the deal. Here we go. Three aims. Easily achievable, easily evidenceable. Exactly the same as the parts I used at the beginning of this presentation. Hmm. Is evidenceable a word? Please write back and let me know. What about content then? Select content to match your aims. If one of your aims is to sell your product, there's no point sticking a photo of your granny up, unless of course she's relevant to the audience, the particular point of the magazine you're trying to explain. But I'm guessing she isn't at this point, so we'll move swiftly on. Consider your audience. What do they really need to know? People are time pressured and bloody easy to bore. I'm going to run through this presentation at quite some speed to try and keep you interested. I'm going to attempt to inject some humour, although I'm not the funniest person on the planet, and I'm going to try and keep it relevant to the discussion presentation skills. If I suddenly started talking about early 19th century Indian land clearings in the US, you're going to go a bit off topic and not really keep watching. Pick content that matches. Keep language appropriate and avoid jargon. I hate jargon. Jargon is the greatest evil anybody can ever commit in a presentation. Um, I had an example recently of, of working with a couple of students and he was a scientist. He, he opened his presentation with, with a wonderful statement on the nature of plant cells. I can't tell you what he said because I can't remember the words he used. Now, does that mean I've taken any information from that at all? No. If I don't understand it, if you don't understand it, if your audience doesn't understand it, what's the point? And keep timing in mind. Right now I'm watching a little red light flash at me from the front of a camera, and I'm trying to think about how long this presentation is going to run for, so you're going to keep watching. Don't let time run away from you. If you've got three minutes, keep to three minutes. So, once we understand those elements, once we understand the aims and the content, we can use that to create an outline. An outline's really a plan, and when you think about your outline, you need to think about style. What's the style of your presentation? I think there are a few different ones you can choose from. Chronological. Dead simple. We can take a period of time. A to B. That's our presentation. We start talking about... Uh, Lord Wellington's early life, and we end at the Battle of Waterloo. Brilliant. Would have been more relevant had I picked a slightly smaller time frame, of course, but you see where I'm going with that idea. Narrative. We create a story. Some of the best presentations I see day in and day out are based on a narrative. They're based on a story. It's somebody talking about their experiences, their life, their loves. Stories are engaging. People love a good narrative. If you can create a story in a presentation, even in three, five, ten minutes, you'll grab your audience. Problem-based. Here's a problem, here's how I solved it. Again, a very relevant way of doing things. Topical. Might be following a particular topic or idea. Or it could be cause and effect. What did I do? How did I do it? All these are relevant styles that you could choose from. But it's about picking one of them and using that style. Once you understand the style, so let's just recap quickly again. I'm going to keep doing this as we go along. We understand our aims, we understand our content, and we understand the style of how we're going to present it. Now we need to think about some structure. And there are three elements to good structure. Introduction. Hi, how are you? I'm Matt. I know what I'm talking about. 
body. Hey, this is aims of a presentation. This is how you do it. Conclusion. If you haven't been listening to what I've said so far, you're not going to learn a lot from this video. Dead simple, dead easy, but a lot of people miss out on it. The number of students I see who stand up in front of me and go, this is management accounting, this is psychology, this is something else, without ever introducing themselves to the point why they're here, what they're doing, why the hell I as an examiner should be at all interested in what they're saying. Introduce yourself, structure your content, bring it to a natural close. If you do those three things, you're on a winner, no matter what context you're presenting in. Okay, so, we've talked a little bit about content. It's number one. If you can't get your content right, don't be in the room. Number two, design. The 200 or so people who've downloaded this presentation already hopefully agree with me that design is a very important part of a presentation. The number of times I've seen a good presentation killed by absolutely terrible design is just beyond counting. And it's one of the reasons that I'm talking today with all these Lego figures behind me and the text. This itself, I hope, is a lesson in design. And it's not an easy one for me. I, I've had to learn. I'm not a natural designer. I'm not a great artist. I look at other people's design. I, I take elements. I borrow ideas. I look at form and shape. And I try to understand how I can make that fit in, in, in what I'm doing. I love this image. This is a little image I, I took from a Flickr account. It's a Creative Commons image. Thank you, whoever let me use it. But it's a very emotive little image. And that's what I love. Great design is inspiring, it's emotive. Visual imagery helps create an emotional response in your audience. And it's much better than loads of little bits of text pointing off in a corner that nobody can read with stuff shot at it. Okay? One strong visual will link your audience better to what you're saying than ten bullet points. And that visual allows you to be the centre of the presentation, not the text that they're trying desperately to read off the back of the screen behind you. Because realistically, that's what happens. People spend their time reading the screen, not looking at you, and that's not presenting. If you think that's presenting, please, please change your mind now. Because that's not. It's not even good teaching. Use less words. There's a great book called The Zen of Presentation. If you ever get a chance to look at this, please do. He says you should never use more than seven words to a slide. I'm not very good at keeping to that, but I, I love the idea. Less words, more visual, more focus on me as a presenter. If I've said that message twice already, be prepared to hear it a lot more, because it's important. And remember, remember, your slides and your handouts are prompts. The presentation is about you. It's about feeling. It's about being a character. It's about having an interaction with your audience. If you can't do that, why are you there? Why are you doing it? A crucial element of this is to be consistent. I hope that through watching this video, my presentation style is relatively consistent. I'm scatterbrained. I move around, I, I juggle. I'm going to do a little bit of a dance now just to annoy you all. Uh, but I move around, it's just who I am. I'm not very comfortable standing in one place rigidly and just saying, Hi, I'm Matt and I'm here today to talk to you about presentation skills. I'm going to stay like this for 22 minutes and this is going to hurt my back. I can't do that. I like to move around. And I try to be consistent. And I try to be consistent in my style and in my design. You'll notice in this presentation all the images are Lego related, all the colours follow a, a theme. It's all a particular style. It's all set up in a particular way. Because it's annoying when somebody changes. If halfway through the presentation I started talking in a Dutch accent, it would annoy you all greatly. It's not something you expect to happen. You know, if I were to try and continue and change your presentation skills are important because, uh, well, it's just something to do. This would really annoy people. I'm sorry for any Dutch viewers, I may have annoyed at that point with my terrible Dutch accent. But I'm trying to make a comic and, and slightly poor taste point on consistency of presentation style. It's crucial 
If you change halfway through, if you change how you're speaking, how you're coming across, your style, you seem insincere, you seem incoherent, and people don't buy into you. And that's what the presentation is about. Fundamentally, it's about people buying into you, your image, who you are and what you're doing. When you're designing your presentation, there are loads of places to get good imagery from. Flickr. Flickr is the world's best source of photographs. Okay? There are hundreds of people, lovely, wonderful people. People out there on Flickr, I love you. You are just the greatest people in the world. Thank you for taking such wonderful photos and allowing morons like me to use them because we can't take photographs. There are lovely people who take great photographs. If you want to find them, I have one recommendation. Compfight. It's a brilliant search engine. It allows you to filter Flickr photos for Creative Commons images. So I can find images that people are allowing me to use. And, and anybody whose images I've used today, you'll see credits at the end of the presentation. Again, thank you very much for, for putting those out there and letting people use them. There's a huge community online sharing stuff. Take advantage of that. If you're trying to work out a colour scheme for your presentation, think about something like multicolour. Again, it's another fab search engine that lets you search Flickr for images that, that hit certain colour themes. But it also allows you to think about the, the overall theme for your presentation. You'll notice that I've got quite a monochrome theme on here. It's blacks, whites and yellows to make key points. Okay? I don't change that. It's a consistent theme throughout the entire presentation. And it's something that my audience understands. And it, it's a basic bit of psychology. The more they view this, the more they get to understand it. And by the end of that period, it's just them and me. You know, they understand what I'm saying, hopefully what I'm trying to put forwards. The world's great. Fonts. Fonts are crucial. There are three fonts you're allowed to use. Arial, Vedana, and Gil Sans MT. You are not allowed to use Comic Sans. Ever. The next presentation I see that uses Comic Sans, I will shoot the presenter. Well, no, that's a little bit melodramatic, but you get my point. You've got to use a font that is easy to read, people understand, and doesn't make you look like you escaped from kindergarten last week. Because if you use Comic Sans, frankly, that's kind of what you're saying. Hello, I haven't grown up yet. Please look at my presentation and take me seriously. Thank you. There are very few contexts in, oh god, did I just do that on a live video? Yes. There are very few contexts in which Comic Sans is, is allowable. Okay? Presenting to kids, mm, kinda. Presenting to people with certain uh, language difficulties, potentially. But in most of the situations, pick fonts that fit, pick fonts that are professional. Oh, and as I said earlier, don't use bullet points. It's just lazy. Bullet points are the 1990s teacher who just found out how to use PowerPoint and has decided to make 10 slides full of bullet points. Don't be that person. Be the person who lives in the noughties. Be the person who lives in whatever decade we're calling this now, the, the 11sies, the onesies. Ooh, the onesies, I like that. Maybe I'll use that from now on. Be the person who lives in, in modern design. Look at PowerPoints that people have made available. Go on SlideShare, go on Stock Exchange. Go on these websites, look at what's out there. Because there are loads of fab images, fab presentations that show you how you can do this without using bullet points. Where you can use bullet points, I'll show you at the end. Oh, that's a clue. Shh, don't tell people. They might just skip this bit now. Delivery. How to sell your presentation to people. Good delivery requires you to understand how we communicate. And that's not always an easy thing to get your head around. When I used to give this presentation, I used to say that this is really the, the dark arts of, of presentation skills. That this is, if Darth Vader were a presenter, he would just teach people about communication skills because it very much is the, these are not the droids you're looking for, element of presenting. My God, I'm a geek and I've only just realised doing it on video. Okay, so here's a good pie graph. I like pie graphs, they remind me of pie. Pie is something I like to eat because I'm fat. Again, a little bit of soft deprecation just to move the video along. Body language. 70% of how we communicate is body language. If I stand in front of this video and did this, hello, I'm Matt. I'm here today to talk to you about presentation skills. In, I'd give you five or ten minutes, you would want to shoot me. It's, it's not interesting. 
I'm going to talk about specifics of body language as we go on, but the idea of an open, friendly manner, good body language, that's really crucial to good presentation. 20% of how we communicate is tone of voice. Now, let me give you a good example of this. What happens when we ask a question? I'm giving you two or three seconds to think about that. It's hard to do on video, but we'll try. Okay. When we ask a question, our voice goes up. Also, if we're Australian, our voice goes up every time we just say anything. Again, sorry to any Australian viewers. But when we ask a question, our voice intonates upwards. So, uh, how are you today? Would you go and do the washing up? That was a bit weird, but you take my point. If I change the intonation, I change the way your brain reads what I'm saying. So if I say, would you go and do the washing up, and lower my tone of voice, rather than reading it as a question, your brain starts to read that as a command. Tone of voice is crucial. It's everything emotional in what we say. All the intonation I'm using in my voice is partly because I'm a bit odd, but the other side of it is because I want you to understand there's an emotional element to this. That I'm passionate about good presentation skills. And that I want everybody watching this to end up being a slightly better presenter as a result. If I can do that, fantastic. What other evils can I achieve in the world if I can achieve that one thing? Maybe my goal to one day finally dominate this planet. <laughs> Not really going to happen, but hey, what's the hell? So, tone of voice. Crucial. Only about 10% of communication is what I'm actually saying to you. All the stuff I've said so far, your brain's going blah, 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 blah. If it didn't have the context, if it didn't have the body language and the tone of voice, it's very hard to really understand what people are saying. Radio works as a medium because we have tone of voice and we get emotion through tone of voice. TV works because we get tone of voice and body language. But without those two things, what we're saying is very dry. One great reason why John Major was never a, a, a good statesman compared to, say, Winston Churchill, was that it would be very hard to say, we will fight them on the beaches, in the sand, in the sea, and we will never surrender, and really inspire a nation to fight tyranny. You can't do that. You need to be a, a character and you need to develop character in your own presentations. So, so let's take a second to talk about that in more detail. Language, feeling. I said the John Major idea there, feeling is everything. Why don't we believe politicians? Because we don't think there's feeling in what they say. There's no passion, there's no joie de vivre. Again, bad use of a French term there, but we'll run with it. Short sentences. It's brilliant if you can run into a very long sentence and keep talking for a very long period of time at high speed, but it doesn't really work for your audience. Short sentences that put the points across clearly are crucial. It's all about the pentameter. Pentameter, not pentameter, pentameter. I'm allowed to make mistakes, it's my video. Of your speech. How does it come across? What's the rhythm? What's the... Uh, What's the style? What's the feel? And use simple ideas. Again, I talked earlier about avoiding jargon, but that's really crucial. Keep what you're saying simple. If it's not simple and it's not understandable, don't bother with it. There's a great quote by Einstein that I love that says, we should make everything as simple as possible, but not too simple. And that's a fantastic idea. We make everything understandable then what's stopping people from getting involved and trying to do something? Nothing. Brilliant. Tone of voice. Volume. I'm a loud person. I know I am. It's a skill. Some people are lucky enough to be blessed with an overly loud voice, and we naturally go to one of two professions. We either become teachers or vicars, namely because we're normally put in large rooms with no microphones. Okay? I became a teacher. I love it. It's what I do. But the volume of my voice is very important. If you speak like this, it's very hard to keep a room of people engaged for an hour. If I said, hello, my name's... I bet you can barely hear this right now, even on the video. If I speak with a low voice, I'm not going to keep people engaged because people aren't going to listen. 
if the pitch of my voice isn't isn't correct as well, it's it's not enough just to have a a loud voice. Oh, oh, oh. It's all about the pitch of your voice as well. I'm lucky. I have a relatively middle range accent. I have a relatively mid pitched voice, so. I can change it, I can come in very loud and booming, or I can take it back and be quite subtle. And that's a good range to have. And I use that when I'm presenting. You'll have noticed the pitch of my voice is changing, the intonation of my voice is altering. And I'm using that to stress things, to make key points. And again, I put there intonation. It's not just about pitch, it's about how you intonate that pitch. If I'm making a key point, I tend to intonate that point. And I do it without thinking nowadays, that's how sort of, of obvious it is to me. But again, it's a crucial element. And finally, body language. You know, I said at the beginning, don't present like this. You need to find your own point of relaxation. For me, it's bobbing up and down on the spot a little bit. That's just who I am. But find a relaxed stance. I tend to say to people when they're first presenting, put your legs slightly apart, stick your hands behind your back. I call this the Prince Charles approach because it allows me to do one very important thing. It allows me to fiddle with my hands where people can't see. If you ever watch Prince Charles, he always keeps one hand in his pocket and he's constantly fiddling with something. It's probably a coin or, or a little trinket, but it's a way that he transmits nerves somewhere else in his body. And that's really helpful to do. I, I do that by just moving generally. But if you're a nervous person, find a way to put your nerves somewhere else. And remember, keep eye contact. All throughout this video, I'm trying to look at the camera, and that's quite hard to do, because I, I try not to generally, but keep eye contact with your audience, because that's how we communicate. A, a lot of emotion comes to our eyes. If you've got a room of 100 students, or 100 people that you're, you're teaching, or 100 people you're presenting to, make sure you're moving around that room, you're making eye contact with people. You're not standing there, sat mindlessly behind a... If this was a script, it would be a very big script, but you get this point. Hello, my name's Matt. I'm here today to talk about presentations. <laughs> please don't look at me, please! You see where I'm going with this, don't you, right now? Okay? Let your body lead. This is an emotive thing. It's about passion. It's about communicating to your students, the people you're presenting to, your clients, that you love what you're doing. If people don't buy into that, they won't buy into you, they won't buy into your message. Look at Obama. When Obama said, we will make change, people believed him. Because people saw a man who was passionate about reforming, passionate about changing. Why don't we buy David Cameron in the same way? This is an interesting debate for my English viewers right there. The important thing is to relax. If you get lost, take a second to come back to your idea. I did that just then. I forgot where I was on my track. I did a little bit of a, what the hell am I doing? What the hell am I about to say next? And I came back to the presentation. You guys didn't even know I'd forgotten where I was. You just thought I'd gone a bit mental for a second. But make sure you're coming back, okay? The worst thing to do is get into the, <laughs> And you just stand there like somebody's shot you. No, not shot you, but I can't really say the other thing I want to say on tape. So I'm just going to leave you with shot and see where you go mentally from that point of view. If you get lost, pause, take a break, relax. Say, look, I'm sorry, I just need a second to come back to where I was. The worst thing you can do to an audience is start mumbling like a, a mad person just escaped from the asylum. Stop, take a second, relax and come back to it. I've never seen an audience in the world who will crucify somebody for going, I'm sorry, I've just lost my place, can I just take a second? Ah, right, that's what I was about to say next, sorry about that. If you don't believe me, go and watch great stand-up comedians. They lose the thread all the time. Billy Connolly, Eddie Izzard, they always lose where they're going. But they come back to it. And frequently they say to their audience, I'm sorry, where was I, what was I going to say next? They come back to it. It's complicated to hold this many ideas in your head, to, to try and create something that's this structured all the time. 
So if you get lost, take a second, ask your audience, say, I'm sorry, where was I? What was I saying when I went off on that maddening tangent? I do it a lot in class, ask any of my students. Practice. I can't, uh, I can't overstate the importance of practicing. And don't read from your slides. Now, one thing you'll notice is I've been looking at this presentation quite a bit. There's a good reason for that. I've not practiced this. This is the first time I've ever done this presentation on video. And I'm doing it today because unfortunately some people didn't turn up, so we thought we'd video it and see what happens. But I've not had a chance to practice, so I'm having to read. But you'll notice what I do is I read and then I come back to you. And I'm trying to keep my focus on you all the time. But if I'd practice this more, hopefully, I could have just done this straight to you without ever having to look back there. Okay, I'm admitting a flaw today. I'm admitting something that's wrong in my style. Maybe you've already noticed it. Hopefully you have. If you can do that, the audience will focus on you. Okay, so practice. Take 10 minutes, take 15 minutes, take 20 minutes. Take a day. Practice your presentation. Get some friends and family in to watch you and see what they think of you presenting. People can give good criticism. If it's not right, they'll tell you. And if you want to look at good presentations, go and watch the masters. Go and look at Steve Jobs or Seth Godin and watch how they present. I promise you, they never put a foot wrong. And they make all the mistakes I've talked about and they cover them up in the ways I've discussed in this video. That's good presentation. Oh yeah, now you can use bullet points to summarize at the end. So we've gone through our presentation, we've talked about content, design and delivery and why those three elements are what makes a great presentation. Hopefully by now you understand that you need to develop some aims, select relevant data, create an outline, use that outline to create some great content with wonderful design, focus on your communication, Find that relaxed stance where you're in the room and you can be passionate about what you're saying. Practice a lot. More than I've done today to do this, please. And watch the experts. Go and look at great presenters and what they do and how they do it. Trust me, you'll learn the most from them. Maybe you'll learn a bit from me, I don't know. If you think I'm a great presenter, let me know. One last thing, there was a subtitle on this presentation, why don't researchers use Lego? Why doesn't anybody use Lego would have done me? I think there's one reason why a lot of people don't do presentations like this and it's a simple answer, people are afraid. People are afraid of looking stupid, people are afraid of thinking that because it's a presentation that uses Lego they'll be thought less of. Well you won't. Not if what you're saying is passionate and convincing and interesting. If you can do that, all of this stuff will fit. All of this stuff will be seen as relevant and useful. And maybe a bit tongue-in-cheek, maybe a bit funny, maybe a bit engaging. It's just a visual. Try stuff. If it doesn't work, I'm sorry. And I'm not saying everybody go out there and, and do Lego. What I'm saying is take some chances in your style and your design. If you don't, you're never going to create wonderful things that lots of people reference and talk about and say, God, that was a fantastic, that was the best academic presentation I've ever seen. Look at the Lego images he used. Weren't they wonderful? I was so inspired. Because you didn't take the chance to try to use them. Take a chance, see what happens, take some risks. I think that's important. You know, if you want to do a presentation dressed as Superman because you think that's really integral to the point, do it. See what happens. But don't come crying to me if everybody laughs at you. I only gave you the idea. I didn't force you. So, here's your turn. And again, you know, sorry, I did a quick turn around to check where the slide was. You see, it's not subtle, but I'm going to do it. What I want you to try and do now is do your own presentation based on the rules I've posted up here today. And if you want to parody me, great, but that's not really the point of what I'm saying. 
try to use the rules I've put up to create a two-minute presentation about something you're passionate about. And let's just stick it out there to the community. Let's see what people think of these presentations. Let's get feedback from other people. And yeah, some people are going to probably say some not nice things. Plenty of people say those about me anyway. But let's just talk. See what the useful comments say. Do people notice where your body language has gone out of context or where your design's a bit iffy? You know, let's get some videos moving around here and let's start a bit of a debate and discussion about really what makes a great presentation. I'm watching. And I'll be trying to give feedback as well if you post them up and tag me. So, so do, please. Try this. Honestly, it will help you. That's enough of a sales pitch from me. I sound desperate, so I'm going to stop. Okay. I said uh, I'd say thank you to the wonderful people who donated images. Thank you very much to all these people here. You can download a version of this presentation on SlideShare. It's at the Zonglindu University account. Uh, so you can see all these in more detail. But thank you very much. You're all wonderfully, wonderfully groovy people for putting stuff on Flickr, making Creative Commons, and allowing design morons like me the opportunity to use it. Uh, and thank you to some wonderful people who inspired me. Thank you to Simon Jones, Jesse D and Yohida Akanisa. All your presentations are fantastic. You've done some amazing stuff teaching presentation skills. Thank you for inspiring me to put this together. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to a couple of friends, uh, Misha Jepson, Colin Jones, uh, Mary Bradley, lots of people who've looked at this, seen it, uh, and a couple of people who gave me the, the guts to try and get this on video. Thank you very much to you guys. It, it's a lot to get that kind of support. Um, and have a look at some of these cool people. Go and look at Ted, it's a fantastic community of awesome presenters. Do look at Steve Jobs and do look at Seth Godin. I hope today you've, you've learned something about presentations. Um, I hope that seeing me doing this maybe makes you feel that it's something you can do. Uh, and that although it's scary and, and weird and odd, it's something I'm not afraid to do to get on video and, and present something I'm passionate and I believe in. Um, and I hope you've learned some of those rules. Go back and look at the bullet points, follow some of the things we discuss, uh, and see where they take you. Thank you very much, guys, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye.